Hello, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to discuss about the providing handover. And we are in the last um, discussion in the unit four. And we will discuss specifically about providing handover. So the handover is an activity where the first shift endorses unfinished functions of establishment such as guest service and other instructions for the incoming shift. And it's presented in this lesson are the steps in providing a proper handover. So in the previous lesson, we discussed about uh, the, that there are different shifts um, in any establishment, especially in hospitality sectors. There are some AM shift, PM shift. We have also graveyard shift and other shifts. So if there's any unfinished um, functions, it will, you know, endorse to the next shift. So it is important that we need to understand this or the steps or the procedures in hand over the unfinished tasks. So before we will uh, discuss more on these uh, steps in providing handover, we will listen first on the introduction with the uh, ASEAN Master Trainer Mom now. Providing handover is an internal function that food and beverage staff undertake in order to provide efficient service even when shifts have changed. It is important that handovers are done with the most minimal, if not without any disruption, to food and beverage service. The following are the steps to efficiently provide handover. Before the handover, or prior to a handover, the outgoing shift should make sure that all areas of the department that are floors, tables, chairs, storage areas, waiter station and equipment are clean and returned to their designated areas. Consumables should be restocked and stored properly. Make sure there is enough change fund in the register for the next service station. Now, during the handover, during the handover, the outgoing shift should provide the upcoming shift with the following information. Status of the orders and service, availability of beverage products and supplies, changes or alterations to the menu, any guest complaints, both resolved and unresolved, any relevant information about specific machine and equipment, details regarding the stocking of table, utensils and other service wares, information on financial transactions such as the following, guests who have already paid, Guests or tables whose deposits have been received. Guests who have indicated themselves as hosts of the table. Guests who may be dining on gift certificates. In-house guests who will be charging the accounts to their rooms. Tables where accounts have been presented but not yet paid. Account status of every table in the service area. So as you listen to this uh, ASEAN master and trainer, um, she discussed about the process or the steps in handover. So as we can um, observe on her discussion, it talks about uh, that's why it needs it needs to have this full knowledge, and we need to be well informed with the processes or functions within the establishment. We need to make sure that the next shift should be ready. And we need to have this kind of preparation. Again, the purpose or the main purpose of knowing this handover steps and procedures so that there is no disruptions in between because we need to, um, yes, we need to hand over the unfinished um, task to the next um, employee who are going to work on that particular time because we are already done 
um, the eight hours duty. So we need to endorse anything. We need to prepare everything so that the next shift should uh, will be ready with the next um, function or service in the establishment. So providing handover is an internal function that the food and beverage staff undertake in order to provide efficient service even when shifts have changed. So we need to have this full knowledge what are the steps or processes in handovering the unfinished task. Uh, as we can see here, uh, to avoid disruption again, even when shifts have changed. So in a, to avoid problems and confusions with the other employees, we need to have this proper handover. Okay, so there is no, we need to make sure that there's no possible problem will arise even if there is a shift or there's a change. So it is important that handover are done with the most minimal, if not without any disruption. This is what I have talking about. We need to avoid disruptions to food and beverage service. That is why it is important that we need to know the processes or steps in handovering the uh, unfinished task. And the following are the steps to efficiently provide handover. It is already discussed by the CN Master Trainer, Ms. Naomi, and we will talk it uh, one by one. So this is the important thing before handover. We need to have this um, preparation. So prior to handover, the outgoing shift should observe the following measures. So the outgoing shift. So this is our status. We need to... Uh, there are a few minutes or hours uh, we will have to leave the establishment. So we need to have this preparation. This is what we are going to do before handover. First, we need to make sure that all areas of the department such as floors, tables, chairs, storage areas, waiter station, and equipment are clean and restored to their designated areas. For example, we have this 8 hours duty. After we have this 7 hours duty, we only have one remaining hours. We need to make sure that these uh, particular things or equipment or materials are already clean. And we return the, this uh, equipment or tools in the designated areas. So that the second shift can able to easily identify or see the, this equipment or materials that they are uh, need in the operations. Also, the consumable items such as paper, napkins, straws, and toothpicks should be restocked and it must be stored properly. And the third one, make sure that there is an enough fund, a change fund, in the register for the next service session. So we need to double check if there's an enough change fund so that we, need, uh, we will able to avoid possible problems in finding change. So this is the important steps or procedures before we hand over. And now we will proceed discussing on during the handover. So the following information is provided to the upcoming shift. This is the other employees who are going to work next in our shift. First, the status of the orders and service. So the upcoming shift must have this information. So the status of the orders and the service. We need uh, the second shift should able to know the status of the orders. Also the availability of products and supplies. What are the products and supplies that is available at that time? And then the 86 item or out of stock menu items. Again, when you see this word, I mean uh, number 86, for example, it is written in the bulletin board in the kitchen or in, in the dining area or in the cashier, we have this, they call it 86 menu. Means that this particular supplies, I mean the products or the food, is not available. Okay, for example, at the top, they have 86 and they write up spaghetti with meatballs, um, Caesar salad. It means that these particular items are out of stock. That is the meaning of 86 items or menu. Now, also, any guest complaints both resolved and unresolved. So we need to hand over. Uh, we need to know if we are the upcoming shift, the guest complaint, if there is any guest complaint. And also not just the complaint, but also the resolved and the unresolved. 
problems or complaints. Next is any relevant information about specific machine and equipment. And last, details regarding the stocking of the table utensils and other service wares. We also have information on financial transactions such as guests who have already paid. So one of the question is why we need to know or to determine who are the guests who already paid because we need to avoid such complaint. For example, if the guest has already paid and we ask them for the payment. So it is, you know, it can, they will feel embarrassed or they will be offended as we ask for payment because they already paid the particular amount. So we need to know the guests who have already paid. Also guests or tables whose deposits have been received. So we need to know also who are the guests who have uh, deposit that the, uh, the employees receive. Also the guests who have indicated themselves as host of the table. So we need to know if we are the second shift, who are the guests that they consider themselves as a host. Also guests who may, uh, who may be in dining on gift certificates. We should know who are the guests of the uh, gift certificates. Also number five, in-house guests who will be charging the accounts to their rooms. We need to determine who are the guests who is eating in the dining area that their accounts will be charged to the rooms because it will automatically their bills will be charged on the rooms so we need uh, we need to avoid asking for their payment because it will automatically charge um, what they have eaten to the accounts of the rooms so upon their checkout uh, they will pay the bill number six tables where accounts have been presented but not yet not paid yet so we need to know what are the tables that these accounts are not yet paid and lastly the status of every ac account in the service area so we need to know if we are the second shift we should know what are the tables that or the status of every tables every guest so it is really important as a second shifter to have this full knowledge what had happened uh, before when we are not yet have our duty so this is the importance of having this knowledge about the procedures or steps in hand overing it is more on the knowledge and information so we need to gather a lot of knowledge and information especially the what or the status before we have the duty and this is also our responsibility if we are the first shift um, assigned at that particular time that we need to endorse, we need to prepare everything so that there is no possible disruption in between, in transitioning of the shift. Please listen Putting carefully. together everything now and to help you remember the concepts previously presented, just commit to memory these three reminders. The first, opening the restaurant, which includes setting up the physical environment the requirements in table setting, and other matters that will ensure guest satisfaction and comfort. Number two, conducting handover procedures or closing the restaurant, which is important to make sure that there is a seamless continuity of service. And finally, number three, guest complaints or handling guest complaints, which are bound to happen in any establishments even of the best restaurants. As an FFB service staff, you must know the techniques on how to handle guest complaints. Putting in mind all these three things will help you prepare for the detailed technicalities of being an FFB staff. So it was concluded by ASEAN Master Trainer Miss Naomi for thank you so much Miss Naomi for the closing remarks so we are done in module one and this is only good for the course fundamentals in for food service operations so in the higher level of your um, curriculum you have this food and beverage operations which we are going to discuss about in module two 
providing table service and we also have module 3 but for now um, this is only for the fundamentals in food and beverage service operations thank you so much for having with me with the entire semester see you in the next semester thank you